Hi. In this video, I will show you how to code a multiplayer ranking system for our widget UI, which we made in a previous video. Before we start, I would like to shout out to Mark Wolbach, aka Warforge, and Logan Lewis. Mark's live stream video helped me to understand how to set up a multiplayer and control each player's data separately. And when I was looking how to assign cinematic devices per player, Logan pointed me to another Mark's code where he assigned teleported devices per player. So I just used same logic with cinematic devices. Big thanks to them. And finally, I want to note that this system isn't tested in published game with many players. I tested it only in a private version with only two players. So I share it as is. And I would suggest you create a new project and implement this system, test it, and if all good, then combine with your existing project or continue to build on top of it. This will protect you from breaking your existing working project if something goes out of control. And now let's get started. I prepared already our devices, what we will use. So let's start from the right side. So we have save point. We want load and save on auto. Same auto load behavior, it's on initial spawn. Then I choose save loadout. So if this is our weapons. Then it's up to you, like, do you want to save resources, gold? This is doesn't matter for our ranking system. This is what you want to save rest. I disabled everything and only left safe eliminations because only eliminations I will use for ranking system. And nothing else here. Then we have tracker device. So again, start to track eliminations. Then uh, target value is zero because we don't want to do any events when this is happens. So again, we are signing on a game start. We are signed with a joining in progress. Yeah, so this is when we already have our session running and then someone joins later. We don't care about hood widget. You can keep it, but we're not showing it anyways. Then make sure you're not enabling this reset on the first spawn because then it will reset all your safe and it won't load. Then we want for any team sharing as an individual. So this is by default. Then when target is reached, set it to do nothing. In here, show on hood, no. Showing progress, again, off. So it means we're not showing that widget. In here, make sure you enable persistence and enable auto save and auto load. You will need to experiment, again, as I mentioned, it's not tested with many players. You see here, it says like resolve conflict. So this is what if exactly same moment, two or more players will try to get this data from the tracker and then what it should do, okay? And there are a few options to so test for yourself, please. So nothing else here. Then we have a hood message device. In here, show on round start. We don't want that because we will activate that for the verse. Then message recipient, we want triggering player. Because again, from the verse, we will tell what to show to whom. Then disable play sound. So you will have sound. Just click on this drop down and do clear. And for show for duration, disable that because you want it to be infinitely on the screen. Then placement. In my case, from previous tutorial, in the widget, I anchored everything to the top left corner. That's what I choose here. So placement, you have here just center and top. So I choose custom. And then in here, I choose top left. So it will stay always in the top left. If you have multiple widget devices, you can have up to five layers of this. So five devices can display the same time on the screen. So in my case, it's only one. So I'm keeping that on zero. Intro animation and outro animation, it's to none, because it just will appear and always stay on the screen. And nothing else here. And final two. I will select two of them. So this is our cinematic devices. We want one cinematic device per player. I will test with two players. That's why I have two cinematic devices. If in your island settings, this maximum players to 16, you need 16 cinematic devices. Don't forget about that. So I inputted here a sequencer from our previous video of the widget and creation of all these widget uh, materials. Then we don't want loop playback. We don't want auto play. Visibility, it should be only instigator. Okay, not for everyone, just instigator, because each of these uh, cinematic devices will control our icons and progress bar. So we want it for individual only. We don't want to keep state, just keep it none. So we have our spawn pads. What I want to do is add tag to them. 
So then in a code, we can get all of them at once. We don't need to create array and input them into array and go through array to like checking when player spawns. We will just use tag. It's much faster and it doesn't care if you will have 20, 40 these paths. Okay, and what I want to show is main hurt. In here, in my previous video, I didn't have these numbers. So we had icons, we have our progress bar, we have our text block. You can drag and drop it into this overlay. It appears like this. And then if you select it, you just set it to center and center. Anchor basically inside of the overlay to the center and center. And then you can shift it to the left or right. So in my case, it was to the left. Yeah, something like this. Okay, so you see it's already positioned like that. So I will delete this. So I have these numbers. I scaled a little bit down size. I think by default it's like 34 or 35, so I put it 20, again it's up to you. And if I will grab now these arrows, you see, so everything stays together. So on the left side it will show current points, and on the right side it will show how many points needed for the next rung. So now I want to control this text, I have this binding, if you didn't have any binding, there will be text, I don't remember what it says, but basically text with a button. You need to click that button and then it will give you drop down asking what to basically select and just select like message hut or something like this and just okay. And it will convert this into this window, okay? And then you can close that one pop-up window and then come here, select your text, go to view bindings and you will have this text here. So click on this and it will appear in here. So actually, I can even show you. So for example, I'm clicking on this. I then want text. And again, arrow to the left, it shows that it goes into the widget. Arrow to the right, it shows from the widget. So in this case, we want into the widget. So arrow is fine. And then in here, I want to choose our hood message and text. Select. That's it. This is exactly what we want. So basically, like in the verse, I will set message to this hood message device, and this widget will pick up that message and send it into this text block. And I want to show a little bit our sequencer. Few people asked me that, for example, I was saying it should be one to one with eliminations and the seconds. So we know that it's a 30 frames per second. So if we want, let's say one second, so we're just setting for 30 frame, yeah? So in this case, you see like it's a 90, so it means it's three seconds. So it means I need three eliminations to get rung. And if I set, let's say on this one, so you see my progress bar is working as it should. It goes from zero to one into this 90. Some people had issue with that, so it's not properly aligned. And that's because some of my keys, they are triangles and some circles. So click on this one, this is our curves, expand, and let's say in the progress bar, see how it looks, so this is our curve, and the triangles, they represent linear, so it means it goes directly from one point or keyframe to another. If I will select, let's say, this keyframe and set it to auto, we have always auto by default, it creates kind of like a, this smooth transition. So it's like easing out and easing in. So it, mostly in animations, we want this. Otherwise, our animation would abruptly change. But in our case, we want our to set to linear. So you can select your key and just press 4. So I was showing in my previous video that when I was coming close to my changing rank, so just a few frames before that, I was setting my icon number still on the one. It should be same. It's one here and it's one here. If in your case it's a zero, then it stays on a zero. And then next frame, I'm changing to next one. And then we have our transition. So from one icon to another. If you remember, we have this rotation and scale down. So we're starting that on here our icon totally will disappear. So then we're swapping on the next frame to another one and we're starting again scaling it up and we see it, okay? And here I have 
on this frame I have my progress bar on one so it means it's full and then on the next frame I'm starting from the zero so hopefully everything understandable now we can do some coding we can go in the verse explorer if you don't see verse explorer click on verse and here verse explorer so now right click on the root add new verse file let's call it game manager create and I will create straight away second one it will be custom player and it's not device so I won't create empty and let's open so we have our game manager we have our custom player let's open both I will delete in here everything let's save let's delete all this we don't need all that and for now i will just write block so there's no errors i will scale everything slightly up so you see better i don't need that window we can remove let's scale maybe up more okay first thing first we need to add our functionality for the tag in here we will just write spawner comma equal class tag curvy brackets you see we have error if we hover over that we see it says we need basically add using we can highlight this like that and control c and control v so basically adding our first using line there's no error now we can save that let's jump back build our code so we need to do that first before adding tag otherwise we will have no tag to add we need to select our spawn pad and go add and here we should see our tag or just search for the tag verse tag markup then in here click on edit and our spawner just put tick that's it no need to do anything else just hold alt and drag just to duplicate and you will duplicate it with a tag because I have only two of them so I will do again so you can see if you done it correctly so again tag edit spawner done okay so now let's go back to our code so first I will implement multiplayer support and on top of that then we will add ranking so first of all we need to create player map it will be at the least where we're storing every player so basically we will have separate class as a custom player so it will be this one and then we can do our ranking system inside of this custom player and this custom player will work for each player separately so when for example someone is leveling up or playing cinematics this is will be working in this custom player and it's only will be triggered by game manager so we have our custom player so this is our this class so custom player our name but inside we have player and then equal map curly bracket so we have error here because we not wrote anything in that custom player verse we'll do that in a second i want to add elimination tracker and i want to add our widget blueprint so this is our tracker device And our hot message device now we can go into our custom player i will copy paste here my using lines which uh, i know we will need to use so you can just like pause and copy that then we need custom player comma equal class so we need unique because we will do comparing and to be able to do this comparing with the classes we need to add this unique when we added this we have no error in here as well with this custom player now i want to add our cinematic device so later i can implement that cinematic devices they will use separate class as well i could use this as a separate file same as custom player or i can just add in the same file with game manager because there will be only like two lines of the code i don't see any problem to have it in the same file so let's do this it will be progress cinematic
it's unique because we will need to compare later and concrete it's because through the game manager i will bring cinematic devices inside of it so we'll do it now progress cinematic of type cinematic sequence device cinematic sequence device and now last one it's variable is available type logic and equal true so basically we'll have array of the cinematic device okay first of all and this array will have not directly cinematic device but will contain classes so it will contain this cinematic device with this logic and then we will be checking if this cinematic device it's available or not if it's available so it's true we're assigning it to the player and then we're changing this variable to false and next time when another player joins we're again going through the array and we're checking and if it says it's false we're going to another one and another one and another one until we're finding which has still true and then when player leaves the server we're setting this variable to true now we can take this and create our array and in here you see i'm adding s so it's progress cinematics because this is array and type will be our this progress cinematic so this is array let's come here build verse code Hit save creative devices here is our device and now we can add our stuff so we have emitter tracker so we can grab it like this or for example main hood you can click on a peak do it like this then we have our sequences and you see like progress cinematics so let's add two of them so we have one and we have second so now we're inputting all this in our code and now we can control it so for now we will leave now progress cinematics and we will do multiplayer side let's unblock this so first thing is our spawners so when you detect when spawner spawns player so we will do init owners. So this is our function. So spawners, it's our name for that. You can name it as you like. But then this is super important. So we're doing get creative objects with tag, and this is our tag. So right now you see like if I will hover over this at the end it says creative object interface so for now it's not yet spawners because we don't know what we're grabbing with this tag it only gives us what we tagged we know that this spawners but code not so now we need to loop for that let's call it like obj is like object in our spawners and then we're getting our spawner So now you see this is class player spawner device. So we're getting this OBJ and we're checking if this is our spawner. And now with this, when we'll go through the loop of them, it doesn't matter if it's one, two, or twenty, it will loop from them and we'll subscribe to spawn event for all of them. And now we need to trigger our function. So this is will be our function on player spawned. We can copy that. And if we will hover over this spawned event, see it says like listenable, it's agent. So it's basically when you trigger this our function, it will pass agent. So we need to receive agent. So we've got our agent. Now we need to get our player. We need to do it through the if because it's available. Because agent could be NPC and it could be a player. When player, it's always agent. Same as NPC, it's always agent. So now we know that this is player. So we can start initializing our player. So init player. So we've got our player here. Now we can send to our next function. So init player. And then we're receiving player of type player. And then what I would like to get is fourth character. I will use fourth character to subscribe on for elimination. So ranking system will only work when you're killing player and not a bot in this case. So I want if 
Ford or it's just character. We have error and it says we're missing this using characters. So again, we can highlight that. Control C, Control V. Okay, so we're getting our fourth character and we can do then. And then we're checking if our player is responding because it was eliminated or is it just joined the game. If, let's call it existing. So again, we have our player of the class player and this is our map custom players. And then we're using this player as the ID and we're checking if it's already existing in the, our map. So if already there, I will put curly brackets. This is means do nothing and nothing else will be executed after this line. If you want to add some more functionality here, so then remove these curly brackets, put comma, and then you can write here something. So for example, I could write print player respond. You will see only this when you will test it. But again, you can add here functionality, what you want player to get or to achieve when player just responds. In my case, I don't want that. So just curly brackets. Keep in mind this indent, it's super important. If something is not working for you, pay attention to my indents. So we have our if, and then I will write else. So it means if our player already exists in the map, so it means it responds already a second time, it's not just joining game. If it's not, then we're doing else. So just for debugging, I will add print line here that I'm starting initializing new player. Now we can get our fourth. So again, this is our this fourth character. First of all, we're subscribing for this fourth elimination. So when character is eliminated, we'll start checking if maybe player jump to the void. So this will be counted as self-elimination or maybe another player eliminated player. We want to know should we award points or not. This will call function. Let's call it update eliminations. And for now, I will create that function, but it will be empty. This one, you see it says listenable and it's elimination result. This is what it will pass and this is what we need to receive. So we call it result, comma, elimination result. And I will write block here. We have error here and it says we need this using game. Copying that and pasting here on the top. Save and error gone. So we prepared this function so we can write logic here later. Let's continue in here. Now let's do custom player, my equal of type custom player. And now in here, we're basically storing information. What we need to store in this custom player. Now, as you can see, it's empty. So we need first now write what we want. And we want store player, of course. Then we want main hurt. And this will be hurt message device. So you see like on the left, it's our name and on the right, it's class. And actually I can add even progress this cinematic so we can receive it later. Progress cinematic. See now it's straight away it says error here because in the curly brackets, we're not passing any information. It's basically empty, but our custom player now it requires that data. And this is what we will do. So again, we need player, comma equal. Player. Then we need our main hut. I won't pass this progress cinematic because I don't have this data and it will show me error all the time. Let's go to another line. And now what we just want is just set this custom player into our map. So if set custom players player equal custom player and that's it. So we're setting this, but we don't want to do anything else after that. So that's why I'm adding just curved brackets here. What we would like to do as well is what if player leaves? If player left, we want to know. So we want to remove it from our map. So in here on the begin, we want subscribe for this event. So we want get play space. Player removed event. Subscribe. 
and we will call on player left server get place space sorry and now i will just copy our function paste it here at the end and what it gives us it gives us player player leaving of type player now we're checking if custom player comma equal custom players so basically we're getting our player in our map then we creating variable new custom player map type because we can't edit maps and arrays so we're finding our custom player and creating new map but without this player or the value players and we're setting new one Don't worry about all this if you not fully understand. We creating our new map, as I said, without our left player. And then we set custom players equal new custom player map. And we're done here. This is our new custom player map. It's basically what we said here. And this one, custom players, this is what we initially called our variable. Now I think we can start implementing our ranking system. So before initializing our player, I want assigned our cinematic device to the player because then I want to pass it to our custom player here. So we want to first find available one. I will copy paste this print in here and I will just call it checking available cinematic device again for debugging and we can start with creating variable available cinematic of type question mark progress cinematic and false because it's available so it's maybe progress cinematic class uh, we have maybe not okay so we're doing this and then we creating variable IDX, it stands just for index integer and starting with zero. Now we will start loop, and because we're starting a loop, I want to add here suspend. What suspend means? It's basically everything in verse, it goes from top to the bottom. It's line by line executed. And if we're looping something, it will wait until it's finished. So sometimes you want that, but sometimes you want it to do two things or even more at the same time, and it's called asynchronously. It means we can do something while we're still looping for the hour loop. And because we have now suspend, so it's have some asynchronous code, so we can directly call it. So I will write spawn, curly brackets here, and curly brackets here. So now there's no problem. So back in the loop, I will start with if idx or index is larger or equal progress cinematics length so then just break so as i said progress cinematics everything is in the array and we want to loop through that array and it's easier to do with this index i will just loop through that and if index is equal or larger than the length of this it basically will stop so nothing else will be executed after that so then we're breaking that line but if it's not, yeah, so we're doing if in a short PC, but it stands for progress cinematic. So on this line, we're doing two things. We're taking our index. So index will start with zero, then one, two, three, and it will loop. So we're taking one by one, we're setting it in this PC. And then in this PC, it's our class. So our progress cinematic class. And because in our progress cinematic class, we have that logic variable is available. So this is where we're checking. With this is available and question mark, we're basically checking if it's true or false. So if it's true, we want available cinematic option curly brackets. 
PC. So it's still optional. And then we're doing for the if set progress cinematics index is available equal to false. So basically, if we checked and if it's true, we will set it to false. And now curly brackets break. And if none of this is working, so then we set our IDX or index plus equal to one. And I will add some slip. So we look through our progress cinematics. We found what we need. We've done that. So we're stopping our loop and we want to implement another thing. So we're setting if and progress cinematic comma equal available cinematic like this. Now I will grab everything this and indent it. So now when we've done with all these cinematics, now we're grabbing this available cinematic. And because it's again, it's optional still. So we're adding it with a question mark. And we're starting here initializing our new player. So we have our four eliminations and we have our custom players. Now here I want to add our progress cinematic. So now we can comment this. Now it asks us to add it. Progress cinematic. And then here as well, we want this. So it's basically the same. Progress cinematic. So we have no error, everything good. So we're passing that data now as well to custom player. I want to add variables, ranking variables to our custom player. So then we can pass that information as well. Some of that, we can even name it ranking variables. So first one, I will call it current eliminations. And actually I will add to all of them private. When you're doing for yourself, it's not so important, but it's a good practice. If you want someone from another class directly change this variable, that's fine, but probably most of the time you don't want. So you want it to be only working inside of this class. And from another class, like for example, from game manager, you can just activate it for the function, like calling function. So if we are putting this private, it means none of the outside classes can do this. Then we have of type integer equal zero. Then I will add max rank reached private. So I want to control what happens when player actually reaches maximum rank. Then I want points, points, private, zero. I want separate points and eliminations. In this tutorial, I won't even use eliminations, but I'm just adding them so you can separate them. Points will mean that points from all games. So let's say player played three times your game and now it's a fourth time. So when they're joining, eliminations will be on a zero, but ranking points, you can grab them from the tracker device and you can assign them so you can restore saved ranking points. But then same time, when player now starts with a point, eliminations, it's on a zero. Player can see, okay, how many eliminations I have now per this game and how many eliminations I have in total. And we want variable ranks walls private of type array of integers and equal array and curly brackets so this is will be a list how many points player needs to get to get to that rank so these numbers in the array needs be one to one with uh, your progress bar sequencer so in a sequencer if you set let's say goal for the first rank is 25 so here you need to 25 if second for example 100 you need input 100 my numbers, they're really low, but this is just purely for the tutorial. Okay, so keep that in mind. So mine is three, nine. What I will add now, because it's a last thing before we can start coding any logic here for the ranking. So this is a line for our hood message device. So I will call it progress bar text or UI. Colizes in here progress bar text so this is for our numbers on the progress bar progress bar text first of all when we will start we're getting points from our tracker and we want to pass them into our custom player as i said i set all of them to private so game manager can directly set them here so we need function for that so let's call it in it current points we have our function and then we're receiving integer and just calling them points i can even copy that later 
for our game manager and then in here set current points equal points we can save so now we're ready to pass this data after this line is fine custom player and we can paste our init current points and we're sending our elimination tracker so we can call elim tracker and then get value player and now i will do on the elimination void we will trigger it and it will just like increment by one and same time we'll do for the points as well now back in the game manager so we can delete this and just for debugging let's add print elimination happened if so now we're getting eliminator so who actually eliminated someone result the eliminating character so it's with a question mark because maybe it's not player now we need to get agent get agent now we're getting player and same time we will get our custom player from our array because we need to send information about that into custom player where we will do all of this calculation for the ranking custom player in custom players map and our id will be player then you can add here another print just for debugging Next character now we're doing if and in here we can check result eliminated character equal result eliminating character question mark we can write not put this into brackets so we have now hold this in this one bracket and then we're comparing this to not so we're inverting check so we're checking when this is not the same so they're not equal so it means another player eliminated another player and in here we can do custom player and we have already prepared our function there on elimination so we're triggering that and i think in game manager it's everything let's call it update ranking it will definitely go on the loop so i will use suspense and then wait let's just add block for now they want call this function from both of these functions so i will do here spawn curly brackets date ranking and i can copy this one into this function as well now we can unblock this one and first of all i want to check if max rank is reached question mark and i will put curly brackets because if maximum rank is already reached, we don't want to do any computation here, any checkup, nothing. Because that's it. Player, it's on the maximum rank. Now let's do space and do else. So if player not on the maximum rank, we're creating variable index of type integer of zero. Loop. Let's create print for debugging. With this print, I will check if it's maybe constantly looping and not breaking. Now, if index equal or larger than our ranks goals, and now we will do that message of string equal maximum rank. Now, main head set text progress bar text for ui so this is basically our that line it shows me constantly error because it says that i don't have breaks just for now i will set one but later i will remove it in here i need capital letter length and in here no space actually in here it's another mistake it's progress bar with capital letter few errors fixed sorry for that okay on another line main head show this is very important if you will use just only like this show so you will show for all players this message 
if you hold control and click on it you see we have one show and we have another show in here in the brackets we have empty but in here we have agent so basically if we will pass agent we will only show message to that particular agent so then our agent it will be player and now we can break now i think we don't need even this one else if oh actually one more thing i forgot sorry because next time we will gain will go through because i'm not setting max rank reached max rank reached we we'll set it to true so now because we're here we're setting this max range to true next time when we'll try to trigger this it will be set to true and it won't go okay now here current goal comma equal ranks goals index then if current points equal to zero so let me first copy all this and let's delete maximum rank reached because we didn't reach maximum rank and in here i will write current points and slash here outside of curly brackets and then again curly brackets current goal so what we're doing here is i'm checking if current points are zero or not why i'm checking these current points because when we will initialize on the begin our current points so we're grabbing our points from a tracker and tracker may have zero points but we're still activating all this and it will go through all this process again calculations and maybe setting up progress bar and sequences and we don't need that if it's zero that's it message that's zero and break we don't need anything else but again if it's not else if current points are less than current goal in here i want to call another function which will actually play my cinematic device and i know that it will be on a loop so i will use spawn curly brackets update ranking ui and i want to pass current goal i will copy this function and then when I called for that function, I will again break. Let's go down here. And again, make sure you're on the right indent. So it should be on the same level as update ranking. I will paste it here. So it should be here on the second one. Update ranking. We're receiving current goal of type integer. Then I will add here suspense void and i will add now block for now so we're breaking here now what i want is what if nothing in here happens first we're checking if this is zero and then here we're checking if points smaller than goal if index is zero goal will be three if index is one goal will be nine and so on and so forth so we're checking if our goal for example now it's bigger execute this one if it's smaller then we need increment our index by one and go again through the loop and check until our current goal is larger than current points so this is what we will do so in here else we don't have any condition i will add print again index so i want to see what index is there now and just add index and we will set idx to plus minus one we're not breaking here because we're incrementing this is last line it means it will go back on the top and it go and go and go until anything of this will happen okay so we finished here let's go back into our updating ranking ui actually i will just grab this whole thing because it's actually same Again, watch your indents. So we're grabbing our progress cinematic, and this is in our variables in here. So we're grabbing this one. It will look a little bit weird, but be with me. 
progress cinematic again and then play and we need to pass our player why we need twice this thing because first one it's when we're getting our cinematic devices class from our array and then second one it's because in here you see our variable in this class progress cinematic class here our variable is called as well progress cinematic and that progress cinematic it's actually cinematic sequence device and we start to play but of course we will start from zero but we will now set our time so our second and as i said i recommend one to one so elimination count equal to seconds in the sequencer so again progress cinematic progress cinematic set playback time Our current points are integers and playback time, it requires float. By multiplying integer with a float, we actually getting float. That's why I'm multiplying by 1.0. And then why I'm subtracting one? Because our current points, this is where our progress bar should stop. If you will do it like this, your progress bar won't be animated. It will basically like jump to that particular second. You won't have smooth playing. And now I want loop. I want to check when our sequencer plays, I want it to play only for one second. So, and instead of just let it go for one second and stop, I will check if it's actually equal to my current points. So I will check that every 0.2 second. And when it actually reaches that moment, I'm just stopping it. You can set it to like 0.1 or 0.5. It's up to you. I think like 0.2, it's fine. And because we're just starting to play, I don't need straight away like check it because I know that it's not yet there because it just, just started. So I'm just setting sleep not at the end, but at the beginning. So I'm now getting current play time. And now we can add print again for debugging. So we can actually see on what second and even like millisecond our sequencer is. And now if current play time is larger or equal to current points multiply by 1.0. So we don't want to stop. Stop it means it will reset to zero. We won't just pause and break. And that's it. We have everything done. I will show now code slowly so you can easier to check if you did everything correctly. Let me enlarge it a little bit more. So we're doing on begin, our spawners, Initializing spawners, then we're getting our player, initializing our player, getting fort, subscribing to elimination events, we're getting our cinematic, uh, creating our custom player, our map, then we have our update eliminations, and when player left server, then in the custom player, so we're getting player data our hot message device, progress cinematics. We have our variables for ranking. So points, eliminations, logic for updating ranking points. And updating our ranking UI. Now let's go back to editor, build verse code. And actually what I forgot, it's our item grunter. So here we want keep all current item. Enable on game start, receiving player, all of them, grant condition always. 
A cube going to my item, yes. I set my ammo to infinite, so I don't care about giving. You won't probably give ammo if you not have infinite. And grant on game start. I don't want to trigger it. I'm just will grant it when it starts. Now let's try in a game. Okay, so let's start. So in the left corner you already could see locks. We have our guns, we have our progress bar. My second account is on Xbox, so we can test with it. And we eliminated, we got one point. And in the logs, you see this is our progress bar checkup, every 0 0.2. This looks fine. Let's close this. And last time. And we changed our icon for rank, it's like with nice animation. And on the Xbox. You see now it's current playtime. It was saying again one. Because on my second window you don't see it, but basically it says like one out of three. And it's basically the same as here, while on my PC it's 4 out of 9. And let's close the game. And start again. And we have, on my Xbox I have 1 out of 3, and here I have 4 out of 9. Just a reminder, it's not tested in a published game with much more players. It's only just with two players. So keep that in mind. But hopefully it will work perfectly for you. And hopefully you fully understood how all this code working. I hope this video is helpful to you. Please press that like button and don't forget to subscribe to get notifications about future videos. See you soon.